turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5. You'll see that the thing that God in Christ chose to say to people is astonishing. It's astonishing. You think about all the things that God wants to say, all this pent up communication. Jesus is born, he grows, he becomes a man, he comes to John, he's baptized by John, the dove descends. When he comes up out of the water, the voice from heaven says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. He goes into the wilderness, he's tempted of the devil, right? After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And then he comes back into society after having overcome Satan in the wilderness. All right? 4,000 years have passed. And the multitudes come to them, come to him, and he heals them. He gains their trust. He, he, he shows that he cares about them. He heals their infirmities. He shows them his love. And then he walks up into the hills, and he sits down, and they come around him, and they gather, and his disciples, and the multitudes. And the Bible says, in verse chapter 2, no, verse chapter 1, why don't we read verse chapter 1? Matthew 5, verse 1. He says, and seeing the multitudes... He went up into a mountain, and when he was sat down, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them. Now let's just pause, alright, again, 4,000 years have passed. God has waited for this moment where he can speak in the person of Jesus to the people. Okay, whatever he's going to say, would you agree that it's important? Amen. Okay? After 4,000 years, you're about to hear the first thing out of the mind of God to humanity. And he says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And we read the Beatitudes, we read this progression, we, we gloss over it, right? All right, the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are they who mourn, blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, blessed are the meek. Right? All right, that's okay. Those are good characteristics. Blessed are the people who recognize that they are spiritually destitute. Amen. Amen. <laughs> For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. And so, right now, if you look at your garden, and you see nothing but weeds, and you recognize that you are spiritually destined, this is the state where God can begin to work with you. Amen. It is not a bad thing if you look at your heart and you say, I am a wicked person. Now, there is no good thing in me. All of my works are like nothing. In fact, they're a positive impediment to everything that God wants to do with me because I rely on my good works. I rely on the good things that I have done. I think I'm a good person because I did this, I did this, I did this. All of those things are a positive impediment to God's ability to implant the seed into your heart. Amen. Right? The first criteria of the kingdom is the poor in spirit. Amen. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That is the place that I can implant a seed. The garden that doesn't care about seeds, you can't give it anything, right? The garden that says, I'm fine with my weeds. I want to be a murderous spider. This is my natural state. You know, I bite my neighbor's head off, right? I, I sleep with my neighbor's wife. I, I do these things, and I'm perfectly content in this state, right? can't help that person, but for the person who recognizes and longs for something better, God can help that person. Then he says, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. There's a promise here. If you mourn because of sin, your sin, your, your family's sin, the sin of the church, the sin of the country, you recognize the poor state of affairs, and you're sorrowful about it, you want something better, there's a promise. You will be comforted. You will be comforted. And then he says, Blessed are the meek, 
for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And this is one of my, this is my personal favorite. This is where I am. You know, there's a promise that if what you want is righteousness from outside of yourself, you will be filled. That's the promise to you today as you sit here today. That is the promise of the kingdom. If you want righteousness, if you want to be filled, the promise is, is that you will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And there is a progression. You start in a spiritually bankrupt place, in mourning, longing to be filled with something better. And then, blessed are the merciful. Mercy is not natural. When you drive down the road and you're angry, somebody cuts you off, somebody is going slow, do you feel very charitable towards that person? <laughs> Your natural inclination is the spider inclination. If I could drive over you with my truck, I would. Right? Why are you going so slow? But, the, but walking with Jesus changes your nature. And you see the implanting of a different principle. Blessed are the merciful. Being merciful is outside of your natural inclination. It is the inclination of God. It comes from outside. It is God's inclination to be merciful. And so if you see yourself becoming merciful and saying, whoa, where did that come from? You know that that is the seed that is growing in the garden that was implanted by the sower and it's doing something. Right? You see that there's something good happening in your life. Yeah. If you remain in an unmerciful state, then you have to go back to step one. Right? You're spiritually bankrupt. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Right? You're not merciful, so you have to recognize that you need something. All right? That's how, that happens to me all the time. You have to go back to square one sometimes. And so there is a progression. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are the, blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the poor in heart. The pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. And then you get to this point where it says, in verse 10, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shed, shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Why are these people persecuted. Why? Why are they persecuted? They're persecuted because they're merciful, because they're peace peacemakers, because they hunger and thirst after righteousness, because they are different than the spiders around them. They have been transformed. And because there is now a discord between the way that people were, which is how we used to be, and how we are now, or what, how we are, how we will be once we go through this process with Jesus, people persecute because they cannot stand to be in your presence because you are different. Now, it's almost time for Pollock. In fact, I think it is time for Pollock, and I have three pages to go. So I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to wrap up here. Um, the Greek word for kingdom used in Matthew chapter 5 verse 3 blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven is basileus and it means royalty blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is royalty. There's his royalty. And then Jesus says that the gospel of this kingdom, not the gospel of, you know, the church and the state colluding together to bring in this world peace, that's not the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel
gospel of the kingdom is the implanting of the seed in your heart. And it turns you into something from outside of this world. It turns you into royalty. Fit for the kingdom of heaven. And those are the people who inherit it when he comes. Um, there are many more things to say. Uh, but I am going to... I am going to, uh, to hold off for today uh, and say that Jesus says, My peace I leave with you, not as the world gives you, give I unto you. And so today as you sit, you have heard, right now, this morning, you have heard the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the offer of something from outside of yourself to replace the natural heart. And the king of the universe came and he became a man to take your place, to die for you, so that he could remake your heart and my heart. And this is the gospel of the kingdom. And today, we can receive it. And tomorrow, we can go out and we can impart it. And we can share it with other people. Because this is the only place where peace is. Right now, there is discord between God and humanity outside of the person of Christ. Christ came to make reconciliation between the Father and people. He made reconciliation. And He offers that to us in the form of the clean heart, the new heart, the kingdom being implanted within us. This is the gospel of the kingdom. So we look at the world in, the, in turmoil out there. Everything going on. Where is the kingdom? This side wants this. This side wants that. There's a struggle. The wicked are like a troubled sea. There is no rest. But there is rest in the person of Christ today for us. Let's sing our closing. Closing hymn, please. 5.30. Thank you.